In today's episode, we are going to be talking about the different types of soils out there. What is the difference between topsoil and a potting mix? Or a soil specifically made for a vegetable garden compared to planting in the ground or using it in a container? Well, in today's episode, I'm going to be covering all of it and a lot more. You'll be surprised, so make sure you stick to the end. All right, so I went to the store and I picked up a few different types of soils. One is meant for cactus, palm, and citrus soil. It doesn't say potting mix in here. This one over here says all indoor potting mix. So we're gonna be opening up the bags and we're gonna see what they look like and which one's gonna be the best one for you depending on your needs. If you have container plants, plants uh, in raised beds, or if you're planting trees in the ground, which one's gonna be the best soil to use. Now this one right here, as you can see on the bag, it says raised bed potting mix. So this one you can actually use it on vegetable garden beds and also you can use this as a, as a potting mix. Why? We're gonna talk about that. This one right here says it's garden soil, right? Meant for flowers and vegetables. Okay, flowers and vegetables. What about if you have fruit trees? That's all I do here in my nursery. I mainly do fruit trees. So I guess this potting mix or this soil right here is not for me. Well, we're gonna op open up the bag. We're gonna take a look at it and we're gonna see if it's gonna work or not. And it's organic. Don't forget about that. Now the last one over here is a topper. This is the one that I actually took me the longest to understand because a lot of the times this one's also called topsoil and uh, usually, as you can see in the picture, it's meant as a filler. You're not supposed to use this on a garden bed. You're not supposed to use this in a ra uh, raised bed. You're not supposed to use this in containers. Why? Well, I'm gonna explain all of it today. So let's get started. All right, so let's go ahead and open up this first one right here, which is a cactus, palm, and citrus soil. It doesn't say potty mix in here, so I assume, oh, actually, never mind. It says great for in-ground and in containers. So they didn't call it potting mix, but it's good for container plants. Let's open it up, and we're going to dump it in here, and we're going to take a look at it and see what it looks like. Okay. I'm gonna dump it in here, just a little bit, and then we're gonna do the same with this one right here. So this one here says it's a potting mix, all natural indoor, just for indoor plants. What happens if you use it outside? Can you not use this outside? Maybe you have to buy a different type of soil if you wanna use it outside, because apparently this one's meant just for plants indoors. What makes it so? Why just indoors? Well, we're gonna talk about that. But let me open it up get a little a little bit out and make a little pile let's put this one right here okay now let's check the next one so this one right here it says it's a raised bed potting mix so this is meant for raised beds. Maybe not to use indoors. I don't see anything indoors about it. Why? I don't know. I guess we're gonna talk about that. But let's go ahead and let it get a little bit out so we can compare. Let's check this next one over here. So this one right here, it's a garden soil for flowers and vegetables. Um, it says in here, um, it's got fertilizer in there, annual, perennial plants. Oh, it says in here fruits, vegetables, and herbs. So I guess I was wrong about not being uh, good, uh, not being good for um, f fruit trees or fruit plants in general. And apparently, it's gonna condition your clay soil. And the last one, this is a topper. It says to prep the soil, overseeding, it will save you water. And I guess it's just used as a filler, meant to go on top. Not to be used to plant stuff in, not to be used in containers. So let's open it up and take a look at it.
Now let's go ahead and take a closer look what they look like. So this one right here, it's fluffy. There's a few chunks of wood in there. It's got perlite in there. A little uh, chunks of wood in there. But it's very fluffy. So let's look at the ingredients on this one right here to see exactly what's in there. So if you look at the ingredients right here, it says it has forest products compost, which is just compost. It's usually green waste. In my area, it's gonna be whatever the landscapers chop down, they take it to the dump, they grind it down, and that's exactly what they mean by that. It has peat moss in there. It has sand, perlite, and a wetting agent and fertilizer. So it says it has sand in there. I can't really see the sand, but we'll trust them. And it has peat moss. I can definitely see the peat moss in there. Uh, wetting agent is usually little pellets that uh, swell up with water and they retain water. And it's got fertilizer. As you can see, there's fertilizer right there. This is just a little pellet. It's got fertilizer in there. All right, so that's the first one. Now let's take a look at the next one. So the next one right here is a potting mix meant for indoor plants. But it, it holds moisture. It's great for starting seed, uh, seeds um, and ideal for most uh, indoor plants. Let's take a look at it. Let's see what it looks like. So it's also fluffy. It feels the same as the first one that we looked at. It is a little wetter. Now I know you guys can tell the difference in color. You're gonna tell, you can tell this one's lighter, this one's darker. But remember, when looking at potting mixes or soils that come in bags, the darker the soil, the wetter it is. That is the only difference. If you ever take something out of the bag and it looks light like this, it is because it's dry, it's not wet. What gives it the dark color it's not how rich the soil is and full of nutrients and organic stuff. It's how wet it is. So this one feels the same as this one right here. Um, it has a few chunks of wood as well. And uh, looking at it, the chunks of wood are actually smaller than this one. This one has bigger chunks. This one has smaller chunks. But other than that, it has perlite. Um, it has peat moss. I can just feel it. And it has compost and wood chunks, which is technically the compost. Now let's look at the ingredients. So this one right here, it says it has peat moss, forest products, which means compost, the stuff the landscapers take to the dump, they chop it down and they decompose it. Uh, arbor finds, so this one's a specific. Now, arbor finds and forest products, it's gonna be the same. They fall under the same category. If you ever see a landscaper driving down the street, whatever it's in their trailer, this is it. But anyways, at least they're honest. Now, it's got perlite, it's got organic fertilizer, which organic fertilizer just means compost. And uh, what else it's got? Oh, it's got lime in there, which is supposed to adjust the pH. Now lime is going to be good for areas that have uh, acidic soil. My soil here in my area is very alkaline. So lime will actually raise the pH in your soil, which to be honest, it shouldn't matter. So it doesn't really matter. Um, but other than that, I don't see anything that will make this specific for indoor plants. And if you stick to the end of the video, I'm going to be telling you exactly what the differences are and what actually makes a good indoor potting mix compared to one that works outside. I'm going to, be, I'm going to explain everything to you. So make sure you keep on watching. All right, let's check the next one, which is going to be this one right here. So this is a raised bed potting mix. As you can see, it comes in a bigger bag because usually when people are building raised beds, you're going to need a lot of soil. So you need, you need bigger bags, right? Obviously, these bags are going to be more expensive than the little ones. Now, this one right here was more expensive than this one because it's meant for indoor plants, remember? Now, let's look at the ingredients. 
All right. So this one here, it has the same thing. Recycle forest products. It's got core which I would say maybe a coco core or peat moss, I would say, dehydrated poultry manure, composted poultry manure, hydrolyzed feather mill, peat moss, kelp, worm castings, bat guano. All right, so this one's full of stuff. But let's take a look a little closer and let's see what it looks like. As you can see, compared to the potting mixes, this one here has bigger chunks of wood that are a lot bigger. I can feel the peat moss and I can tell you the main ingredient in here, just by looking at it and feeling it, it's going to be peat moss and the compost. The same compost that we talked about, landscapers driving down the streets have in the back of their trailers. But other than that, I don't see anything else. It has a little bit of perlite, just a few specks every, every once in a while here. But mainly, what I see here, it's wood. Chopped up wood and peat moss. How much guano is there in here? Worn castings, I don't know. Because you won't be able to tell. But other than that, this doesn't really look much different than this one right here. The main difference is it has bigger chunks of wood. Now let's look at the next one. So this one right here is garden soil for flowers and vegetables. Technically it's the same thing as this, but the bag is a different color and they're calling it a different name. But it's meant for flowers and vegetables. So for somebody that's just starting and they want to grow flowers and vegetables, you're going to go to the store, you're going to see this one, you're going to see this one here, and you're going to buy this one because you're growing flowers and vegetables, right? So technically this one's better than this one especially for somebody who has no experience or knows the difference. So anyways, let's take a look at it. So this one here, it has compost, rice hulls, recycled forest products, arbor finds, Manure, poultry manure, gypsum. This one actually has gypsum. And more manure and feather mill. So let's take a look at it. Which is going to be this pile right here. And to be honest, I'm feeling it. And I can tell this has peat moss in it. I can feel it. And when you have experience dealing with plants every single day, you can just feel something and you know what's in there. So this one here, I know it has peat moss, but looking at the ingredients, it doesn't say peat moss in there. So anyways, it's got chunks of wood. You can see there, chunks of wood. To be honest, this one right here does not feel any different than this one. Oh, and look, it has a few specks of uh, perlite in there too. But if you look at the ingredients, it doesn't say anything about perlite, but it's in here. So where did that come from? I want my money back. Anyways, this one feels the same as this one. I don't see any difference at all. If I was to mix both of them, I would not know the difference. But yes, so that's that one. Now let's look at the last one. And the last one's gonna be the topper, right? This one's, it's meant for, uh, for as a filler. Uh, you know, if you're growing grass, you got low spots, you wanna save water because technically this saves water. So you're gonna dump it on the surface and you're gonna spread it out and do what the guy in the picture does, is doing right now. So let's take a look at it. So this one right here is very light, very light. It is a little drier than the other ones. That's the only reason why it's lighter. Keep that in mind. But other than that, I can see it has a lot more wood than the other ones. It is very fluffy. And uh, actually, I can see, I don't know if you can tell or not, it has peat moss in there. 
the little strands of peat moss that are hard to miss. But yet, the ingredients don't show peat moss in there. So, but it has it. And it has a lot of wood in there. And I'm sure it has compost. Oh, look, look at that. It has perlite in there, look. You see the white uh, specks in there? It has perlite in there. How can you have perlite when the ingredients don't even show perlite? So let's go ahead and take a look at the ingredients. So it has recycled forest products, um, manure, and uh, feather mill. It doesn't say anything about peat moss. It doesn't say anything about perlite, but it's in there. So proof right there. So now let's go ahead and actually talk about this potting mixes, soil mixes, and whatever else they want to call it. Now one thing I want you to keep in mind is don't look at the brands, okay? The branding is irrelevant. This came from a box store. Um, and usually the bigger brands are the only ones you're gonna find at the box stores. But one thing I wanna tell you is all of this uh, potting mixes, soils, toppers, they're all the same. Most of them come from the same pile. Now usually before bagging, they will mix up some other things into them and then call it whatever they wanna call it. Like this one's right here. So the potting mixes, usually what makes a potting mix a potting mix uh, for most brands out there, it's going to be peat moss or cocoa core. The cocoa core is going to be a lot more expensive, so more of uh, the uh, specialty brands are going to have mainly cocoa core rather than peat moss. But peat moss is very cheap and uh, easy to get, especially when you're buying bulk. And that's mainly what the main ingredient in your potting mixes is going to be. Now, this one here has perlite, and uh, they claim perlite increases drainage, but in my experience, perlite Incre increases drainage, but you have to use a lot of it. And over time, what happens is it will float to the top. So I don't like to use that much perlite anymore. I have not really noticed the difference, so to be honest. I don't even use it in my potting mixes anymore. And I grow thousands of plants every single year. So anyways, and it has a wetting agent. Now, I think that's stupid. You know why? Because you have to water your plants every single day. And that wetting agent is just gonna last for so long and then it's gonna stop working. It will swell up and then expel the water out and swell up again. It can only do that for so many times. And it's not that long. And a lot of the times when you have plants in containers, you're gonna keep them in containers for months to years. That wetting agent is not gonna last forever. So that's not a selling point for me. That is just wasteful. It's just polluting the environment and it's just another gimmick for them to take your money. Now, as you saw over here, these two main ones right here, to me, they are the same. This one's just wetter than this one. This one's just wetter than this one right here. Different packaging, one meant for indoor plants, and then the other one just says cactus mix. So it doesn't really matter which one you buy. If you're in the market for potting mixes, just buy the cheapest. It doesn't really matter. I have proof right here. This is a Shangri-La mulberry. And as you can see, my potting mix looks very similar, if not the same, and as all these potting mixes in here. Yes, it has a lot of wood in there, but other than that, that's it. It's the same thing, it works. Most roots don't care what's in the potting mix as long as they have something to grab a hole of and something that holds a little bit of water. The main thing to concentrate with potting mixes is drainage. When you water your container, you want the water to go through the metal and drain, I would say, within 30 seconds or less. As long as the water drains through the metal within 30 seconds, you can use any of these. No issues at all. So if you're trying to save money, go to the store. It doesn't really matter what brand you have, what they call it. They are all the same. They all come from the same pile. I'm not going to name the company in my area, but every area is going to have one of these. So this company here is a dump, right? And all the landscapers in the entire Arizona area, they go there and they dump all the trim, uh, trimmings, all the clippings, all everything that's green waste, wood, chop down trees, everything, they dump it there. So what this company does, it will grind it down, let it decompose for a little bit, and then what they do is they repackage it. And then they sell it locally and they claim to be the best. Every brand, brand will claim to be the best and a specific 
and have, and have a specific purpose for whatever thing that you're doing in your garden. So they're all the same. This is why you can tell all of them have wood chunks in them. Now, usually the potting mixes are gonna be sifted a little more than the garden mixes, simply because, you know, it's fluffier and then it feels nice and then people actually notice this a lot more than the other uh, types of soils, especially if you're gonna be use, using these in containers. Now let's talk about the indoor versus out outdoor. What makes an indoor potting mix better than an outdoor potting mix? So in my experience, it's gonna be the organic material. If you're gonna grow plants indoors, you want stuff that's inorganic. It's stuff that's not gonna rot, it's stuff that's not going to decompose. So if you're gonna grow plants indoors, just to keep it simple for you to understand, just use cocoa core 100%. You will never have any issues growing indoor plants. Can you use cocoa core outside? Of course you can, it's very expensive. So that's the reason why I don't use it. But other than that, you can also use peat moss 100%. Um, I don't like peat moss 100% because it tends to um, become hydrophobic, especially if you forget to water your plants. That's a different uh, topic for a different video. But anyways, just to keep it simple, cocoa core indoors, you're good to go. Now, if your potting mix has organic material in there and you bring it indoors, well, what do you think is in here? There are insects, there's bacteria, there's fungi, there's all kinds of stuff in here. This is where the fungus gnats come from, especially if you keep your potting mix wet indoors. So that's the only thing that makes a, a potting mix meant for indoors compared to outdoors. But as you can see, this one has composing it. It has wood chunks in there. You bring this indoors, you're gonna get fungus nuts for sure. You're gonna get critters that are eggs in here that are going to hatch inside your house. So calling it an indoor potting mix, that's a lie. Because this right here, this de decomposed waste was sitting outside. And guess what happens outside? The bugs lay their eggs inside the, uh, the soil. And then they package it. Some of them will heat it up a little bit, like pasteurize it, but not to the point where uh, it's gonna be 100% pasteurized and uh, that will kill a lot of the bugs. But yes, they are in there. Now let's talk about raised beds, vegetable gardens or planting in the ground. That's just a, a sales gimmick to take your money. Any of these will work in a raised bed just the same as using your native soil. You can go outside, scoop the soil up, put it in a raised bed and guess what? your vegetables will grow in that no problem at all. But what happens is we are brainwashed into thinking that you need special everything for everything that you do in your life to include soils when it comes to growing plants. So this right here, can, do you have to use this in a raised bed? No, you don't. But you know, a lot of people don't have the luxury to go dig up the soil in their backyard and then you know put that in their uh, raised beds. But yeah, this, all this three right here, everything in here is the same. It doesn't matter which one you use. And it's, easier, it's easy to tell that because even in the ones that claim to not have any perlite or peat moss, I can feel the peat moss in there. I can see it and I can see the perlite because they are all mixed in the same machine. And they're all the same. They come from the same source. The main difference between usually most of them is how much they filter and how much they sift it to take the big chunks out of it. That's it. That is the only difference. This is just a way for them to take your money. And this is why gardening is going, it's going to be one of the uh, most confusing hobbies that you will ever get into because everybody out there is trying to sell you something from soils, potting mixes, to fertilizers, and everything else. It doesn't really matter what you call, what you call it. You can call it a potting mix, a soil mix, a container a soil. You can call it a topsoil. Technically, topsoil is just dirt, right? Dirt that's been sifted, that is very fine, that you can just dump on your yard to fill up low spots. You see this one right here? This is full of uh, green waste, full of wood, organic material. If you put this in your yard to fill up low spots, what, the, what happens to organic material over time, especially if it gets wet? It will decompose. What happens when it decomposes? It will break down and disappear. This is why a lot of the times when you are planting trees in the ground, your trees sink 
over time. Not because you forgot to compact the soil as you were planting your tree in the ground, but because all the organic material that you put in there is decomposing, disappearing because all the insects in there are eating it up, and then guess what happens? Nothing's left behind, and then that makes your tree sink. So this right here is just a waste of money. If you have low spots in your yard, you buy sand and you fill up the low spots. You don't buy this topper right here to fill up the low spots. Uh, now this one is meant for overseeding. I guess if you're planting grass, you can throw this on top just to cover the seeds so that way the birds don't eat it. But other than that, this is just waste of money. And that is gonna be the reality for any type of soil that you find out there. They are all the same all of them but they will all claim to have the best that's going to make your plants grow the fastest the best and it's just a sales gimmick and that's it that is the truth for most souls out there i fell for this trap when i first started it took me like two years to realize that plants didn't care about what type of soil i use when growing them in containers and then it took me even another year or two years to actually realize that plants don't care what you use when you're planting in the ground. As long as the soil drains the water, your plants are going to grow. It's that simple. Now, some of them claim to have fertilizer in there. To be honest, I don't care about fertilizer in containers, especially when planting trees in the ground or first putting them in a container. The fertilizer is irrelevant because the plant what usually is going to happen it will root itself into the soil and then while it's rooting itself into the soil well yes it's going to require some energy but the plant has energy stored within the plant so even if the soil had no fertilizer it's still going to grow so if you find a potting mix that has fertilizer in there don't waste your money just Buy the fertilizer that I use on all my plants, link in the description, and that's what I use for all my plants. It will last usually six months to a year and super easy to do. But yeah, I mean, putting fertilizer in there is just a waste of money. You know why? Because this potting mix right here is wet. They wet it before they package it, so it looks black, nice and rich. And then you buy, you take it out of the container, uh, the bag, and you're like, oh my God, this is organic. This is amazing. My plant's gonna grow fast. But in reality, it's just freaking wet. And then the fertilizer they put in there, completely dissolved already, gone, and it's not even usable for your plant. So anyways, so that's the reality for the potting mixes. So if you wanna keep your life simple, just go to the store, buy whatever you wanna buy, doesn't really matter, find the cheapest and use that for your potting mix. Now, if you're gonna uh, grow plants indoors, just use 100% peat moss or 100% cocoa core and call it a day. It's that simple. You're gonna plant trees in the ground, just dig a hole and use the same soil you took out of the hole and put it back in the hole and you're done. It's that simple. You're growing uh, vegetable garden beds, well, get some topsoil, go online, type in compost for sale, soil for sale, in every area, it's going to have somebody selling soil wholesale. So if you have a pickup, if you don't, go rent one, and then you can get like a yard, a scoop of soil, super cheap. And then that's more than enough for all your garden beds. And obviously, if you're in a pinch, you can go to the store, buy the biggest bag you can find, the cheapest, and you can use that. As always, guys, if you like my videos, don't forget to like it. If you haven't subscribed, what are you waiting for? And as always, I will see you next time. Bonus content. What's up, guys? So, read in the comments as of lately. I've noticed that chili right here, it's got some followers. So, I thought I'll make a little uh, extra time and uh, introduce you guys to chili. So, chili right here, he's my partner, and as you can see, he's hot. He hates the heat. But Chili does not not like to be indoors unless I'm in there with him. So even if it's super hot outside and he's sweating bullets and he just wants to go uh, inside the house, well, as you can see, he's looking for shade. He won't stay indoors. He'll come out and sweat with me all day long. But Chili, Chili is my partner. He's been my partner for about three years now and he is with me all the time all the time 100% of the time he likes to come outside 
he likes to dig and he likes to help me you know make my videos so I'm gonna go ahead and answer some of the questions that you guys have asked in the comments one is why is Jelly always on a leash well I have to uh, go outside in front of my house and then come back and then if you guys don't know I have a backyard nursery so I get customers in my house and uh, Chili here he's not the friendliest with kids he just does not like kids so I have to keep him on a leash especially if I have customers around or if somebody leaves the gate open I don't want Chili to run off and you know get run over so that's why whenever I am outside or open for business and I know somebody's gonna open that gate I have Chili on a leash so otherwise Chili is always off the leash he stays with me he follows me everywhere um, but yeah so what type of dog is Chili so Chili is a Chiwini what well, it's a Chiwini a Chiwini is a mix between a Chihuahua and a Dachshund so that is what Chili is Chili otherwise is very friendly and uh, he's my friend so forever but anyways I just wanted you guys to uh, know a little more about Chili since I've noticed uh, many of you actually like him and I uh, look forward to see him in my videos so you'll be seeing a lot more of him from now on so anyways I'll see you next time.